What's up, y'all? Jared Sandler here, getting ready for the Rangers and the Yankees, the finale of this three-game series, and we're going tripodless. So uh, I'm freehanding it right now. I'll do my best to keep uh, everything still for your viewing pleasure. All right, so a few things in advance of tonight's game. First, the Rangers have a chance to do something that nobody's done against the Yankees since mid-April, and that's win a series in New York. The Yankees have won 20 or won or tied 20 straight series at Yankee Stadium. The last time they lost the series in New York at Yankee Stadium mid-April against the White Sox. Well, Rangers are playing for a chance to snap that. They've already stra uh, snapped the Yankees streak of consecutive games scoring a run at 220 in the opener. They can win a series with a win tonight. Lance Lynn on the mound, and even though Lance is going to be around next year, and you're not necessarily watching September to uh, help determine his role. Uh, he has slowed down a little bit of late. We'd like to see Lance pick things up. He's a big fastball thrower, as you know, and the Yankees uh, hit the fastball really well, so tough test. Uh, but he's had a lot of those challenges this year because, in general, players and teams are typically better at hitting the fastball than anything else, relatively speaking. But Lance has had success. Uh, I wonder if maybe slowing down just a little bit. He's had a, a big workload. Uh, you know, he's approaching 200 innings, has over 200 strikeouts. Uh, he has thrown the second most pitches per game on average in Major League Baseball. Uh, but this will be a fun test for him. Here are two guys who are with the Rangers right now. Actually, I'm going to give you four guys who are with the Rangers right now whose performance in September could impact things. Let's start with Jose Trevino. How Jose Trevino fares in September could influence the Rangers' confidence level in his role behind the plate next year. Uh, it could vary. It could be like, hey, we cannot have this guy as our starting catcher. Or if things keep up the way they've been going here, maybe they look at it and say, hey, you know what? Let's have a timeshare behind the plate and, and let's give Jose Trevino 80 games. Uh, if not, maybe you know a little bit more. With Jose, it's about the development with the bet. Uh, that will help determine the sort of role he has long-term behind the plate. Defensively, from a leadership standpoint, he is so advanced as a catcher. and uh, At minimum, it seems like he's going to have a long career as a backup. The offense will determine the extent of his uh, role as a starting catcher. Ronald Guzman's another guy. I think you know a poor performance in September from Guzzi could influence the Rangers to really open up uh, their exploration of first base options for next year. A good performance from Guzzi won't necessarily prevent the Rangers from exploring first base, but they could then look at it and say, you know what, we really like this guy. We're going to give him another chance. He's going to go into spring as our likely starting first baseman, but we need to have some options just in case it doesn't work out. So a good September could help Guzzi kind of get his role back at least to start 2020. And then two guys kind of in the same boat, Danny Santana and Nick Solak. Solak's playing third tonight, I believe. Uh, I want to see how those two guys play at third base because their performances defensively at third could lead the Rangers to have the opinion, all right, defensively, these guys can cut it. And if we don't get Anthony Rendon or maybe Josh Donaldson, if he's of interest to the Rangers, we're okay with either Nick Solak or Danny Santana at third base. So I'm going to be curious to see how those guys fare defensively. All right, there you go. That's uh, your Rangers Daily. Uh, tune in pregame at 5. First pitch just past 530 on 105.3 The Fan and the Texas Rangers Radio Network.